I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. It's Chinese kit time. Chinese kit time. Chinese kit time. Do 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 do. Soldering iron is on. I've just flipped that on. Let's see. Oh my giddy 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 bigger. What 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 what? Is it broken? It's a broken kit, maybe ish. Or these are two remote things. Hmm. Do I detect some LED flashing flashing action? Maybe. It's definitely in Chinese, and it's definitely complex enough that I don't understand what I'm looking at here. I think it's a 555 timer CD4017. Is a CD4017 a decade count or some summit like? Um, just looking here. Gosh. I'm going to zoom in on the circuit because some of you at home who are playing along will be able to kind of. I'm just going to hold it steady. Go. And we'll have a look see here. You can see the power's coming in on the up here through that. What is that? 555 timer there. So that's going to be acting as the clock for the system. And then you have the CD4017 where you're only using one, two, three outputs. But they're all actually chained together and then they're all going through the same sort of if you look here, transistors that are dropping. So the transistors, the, uh, the 8050s are doing all of the heavy lifting in terms of dropping the uh, current through these banks. You can see they're just basically four chains running in parallel. Um, so I'm guessing here, they're using, this thing is acting as some sort of buffer really, and I don't know why they need so many outputs. I mean, maybe they need a certain number of them to be able to drive that transistor high enough because there might only be a certain limited output voltage. I mean, I don't know what you're going to need. You're probably one volt maximum to hit that, but then you've got this, uh, these R2 and R3. Hmm, it's a mystery. I guess we don't really care, though, do we, when we're putting these together because we'll just keep throwing all the parts in and hoping it'll work at the end of it. Unusual, this kit, because it doesn't actually have the IC holder we're so used to having. And, of course, the PCB has been snapped which is a little bit annoying so maybe what we'll do is we'll just kind of I think I want to repair the PCB first because it's kind of easy to do no don't worry about that we'll do that after let's just crack on shall we we'll worry about repairing the PCB after we've stuffed all the other components and look at the legs on that thing look at the pins on that that's certainly had a bit of abuse so we're just gonna straighten them up with the edge of this PCB that's okay, don't you worry. We'll take good care of you here. You're in safe hands. Don't show it anything else I've ever done, ever. You'll only startle it. Right, that was quite nice, it's in. I don't know really, um, it's kind of useful for debugging when they give you the sort of IC holders because if you've watched some of these before, there actually has been on occasion times when it has failed and uh, it has actually turned out to be one of the ICs so we're not going to be able to debug this one if it fails we're just going to stop got a bit of solder let's just crack on get some solder in there one two three now last night I did a little experiment on a PC to test my airflow and I let off one of those smoke bomb things for testing chimney flues in here and I woke up with the awful, most awful kind of welder's flu. Um, and being a reasonably experienced welder, I do know the symptoms of it and I do know what causes it. And that smoke gets into kind of all your eyes and your eyelids and irritates that whole area. And that probably causes tensions in your brows and sinuses and then you're pretty unhappy. So doing this so soon after that is kind of throwing caution to the wind but you know I'm willing to take that risk for you for you who are bearing with me because you're interested in do I purchase this Chinese kit of rubbish what else have we got so we've got some easy stuff here we've got this nice variable resistor 
And I'm always happy when I've got put things down that don't have, you know, values <laughs> like resistors because it takes me ages to work them out. And I know, guys, some of you are screaming at me on Twitter. This is what they are. How come you haven't learned it? You know, I haven't learned it and I'm just never going to learn it. It's... I'm that, I'm that old now, I don't think I'm really ever going to change. These transistors are identical, so that's pretty convenient for us, so we just pop those in. You know, sometimes you just got to realise, is it beneficial for that person to be the way they are? You know, so if someone's got a really bad memory, I've got a pretty bad memory, for numbers, names. Um, why would they want to do that? Why would they want to be like that? If they could change, perhaps they would. Perhaps they've already tried learning mnemonics and little tricks, you know, like when I meet somebody for the first time, I repeat their name 200 times internally um, and I look like a nutter because I'm not actually paying any attention to what they're saying. Or do you just go with it? You know, you wing it. If you need to know someone's name, you'll figure it out. Really, how, how embarrassed is somebody when you ask them their name? Sorry, I, uh, f I forgot your name. What? You forgot my name? Nah, they never do that. Right, electrolytic capacitor, nice and easy. We're getting to the end of the easy stuff, I sense. Although there are a few diodes. Can't really go too far wrong on the diodes. So I'm really curious though what those diodes are doing. Why? Why has it got three of them? And why diodes? Because I would have thought that they're using the diodes to sort of drop the voltage a bit, but then they're using three. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ah. I just thinking. Just bear with me on this. I, I know we're in the middle of the build, but look. The 555 timer is triggering this, right? And every time this 555 timer pulses, it's going to switch. This is like a decade counter. So the first pulse will be on zero, second pulse one. So it'll be tick, 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 like that, right? So if you've got these chained together, when it's on zero, if you've got the diode here, it can power through, drop this down, and these two other diodes are stopping the current from this going back into this chip and probably causing this to get confused. So what this is really doing, it's affecting the duty cycle. So it means on tick zero, it's on. Tick two, it's off. Sorry, tick zero, it's off. Tick one, tick zero, it's on. Tick one, it's off. So it's going on, off, on, off, on, off, on. Do you see what I mean? It's using every other one. So these will be con these will have an equal pattern of strobe. That's all it is. So these will just be doing like a... In fact, they won't. It'll be like a... We'll see now. It'll be like a police one, I bet you. Like the left one will flash and then the right one will flash. That's my guess anyway. Let's just crack on. I'm having a bit of a brain fart there. Because um, when you think about it, I think that is kind of how the police ones go, don't they? They sort of don't just flash left, right, left, right. I think that might be ambulance, fire engine domain. They definitely have a different type of straw bin. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it anyway. We're going to find out. And if I'm wrong, please, you know, think of a suitable punishment for me. A punishment, you know, more suitable than me just having to be me on a daily basis. Right, let's crack that. Oh, that's, that's a bugger. Did you see that? It just dropped. You probably didn't notice, but it just slipped right through. That is one mean... Capacitor. I'm going to have to do this one-handed here, the tack weld. Or tack solder when you're not actually welding. Same sort of thing. Never done brazing. Do you tack braze? Cut off those legs. We've been quite neat as we go along here, keeping nice and tidy. So we've just got a few diodes to go, and uh, really Unfortunately, there's only a few resistors, and there's there's actually four resistors, two 10Ks and two 100Ks, so, sorry, 100 ohms, so even I'll be able to sort of decipher those. So that twisty pot, the little variable resistor that we put on there as well, I suspect that's going to change the frequency. And that is probably the end of my predictions on this board, because there's not really much 
in the way of further I.O. So I don't know what you'd use this for. You could probably try to you know, pretend you're a police car or something and get yourself arrested. I wouldn't advise it. But maybe if you were trying to build a prop, a prop police car, and you need some sort of strobe effect because you're uh, some sort of low budget Doctor Who type show and you, uh, instead of just buying your props, you're getting somebody like your intern to make them for you. He'll be sat there putting this together. Just going to plop these on while I can before they uh, go tonto. Tonto the right word there? Hey, well, probably, probably a bit more uh, appropriate. Go tonto. They've gone totally tonto. They've, they're off the reservation. These diodes have ceased to be functional. It's really filthy. Got to get that cleaned up one day. Not today. Come on. Look at this straggly bunch of crap here. Come on, diodes. Oh, my. That's it. I've broken the PCB. Being very rough. I've got these uh, side cutters here, and uh, I've been very rude with them. I'm afraid. And I have damaged the PCB. So this is a good chance to show you how you could damage a PCB. Ah, oh. and uh, yeah, I've really damaged the diode too because not only is the PCB damaged, the actual diode is broken. Let's ignore that, keep going. Keep going, keep carrying on. I don't think I'm going to uh, forget about fixing that. So my advice is if you're doing these diodes on your board, probably just solder them one at a time because they seem to be a bit fragile and that whole big mess of wires lends itself to something getting smashed up. So I know you're wondering why isn't he freaking out about that? Well, one I've got bit better things in my life to freak out about, but two, we'll be able to easily repair that. It's not a problem. Don't let all these uh, naysayers say knee to you. In fact, ooh, that's going to be sweet. That would be a really quite nice repair. That's the sort of repair you do when someone comes to you with a broken Xbox and you open it up and that's their diet. And you go, yep, yeah, I'll fix that for you. That'll be £120, please. And uh, yeah, they'll pay you £120 for an, an 8 pence diet. I'm pretty sure they won't. I'm pretty sure Xboxes don't have... Uh, this kind of diode in them, but if they did, you could do that, and then you could feel very either pleased with yourself for being so savvy, like an Alan Sugar, or disgusted at yourself for conning somebody. Right, we managed to make it through the woods alive. I'm probably going to just remove our diode dregs right now so we know we're never gonna be able to get anything out of that boy <laughs> the other one's a bit easier to come out because it's not really connected to anything come on right onwards we've got a bunch of resistors here five resistors and that's handy because actually we have 10k 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 and then two 100 so I'm just going to assume these two on their own are the 100s and one goes right here splay those legs out splay those legs Now, I understand from some of the comments that some of you apparently just uh, listen to my videos um, when you're trying to sleep at night. So I don't know if that's uh, a good thing or a bad thing. I would hope to be keeping you engaged, but I'm going to be fair as well because uh, I do the same thing sometimes. I like to put on my favourite sort of YouTube channel sometimes when I'm feeling a bit... feeling my insomnia kicking in and... Uh, 
I just leave it running in the background because it's pleasant. Like listening to a warming Radio 4 show at, uh, you know, 1am. Well, I think actually 1am is too late, right? They've already played that, uh, you know, that, that weird thing where it's like, uh, Bay of Biscay 47 automatic. The sort of shipping report. 10k, let's pop that 10k in there. Come on. God. Through hull. Once you sort of go to surface man, and I do advise you try that. This seems so slow by comparison. You get so quick at whipping things across with the sort of tweezers, you know, that uh, you never want to go back to through hull. Once you go, I can't think of us. <laughs> Once you go surface, you never go whole. Yeah, that sounds, that flows well. We do have an opportunity with that diode actually, because with that missing diode, we could run it. And when we run it, we should see a weird timing going on. And then we can short across where that diode was and pretend if they didn't use diode, see what happens, and see if that causes that decade counter to totally freak. Last 10k. There's also the danger, of course, it might blow the decade counter to bits. Um, and that might be an undesirable operation. So we're there. Just got the one oh. resistor leg. I'd like to sort of seat a bit better. And it is now seated. So everything apart from our diode is in. So LEDs, I think we have to just go for all of one colour on each side, otherwise that would kind of be a bit crazy and pointless. Oh boy. I think we got about 30 of these, do we? How many is on each one? Make sure you get these the right way when you do this. Otherwise, you'll have to modify the uh, connections between the boards slightly, sort of change the polarity around. No, it's 24 LEDs. That one's a bit bent. Long leg down, by the way. Get to a, if you get to the sort of pattern, I'm just following a long leg down because they're all aligned the right way. And you've got to be careful of that sometimes, just ever, every now and then, you'll find a PCB which will have, for whatever reason, gone against the grain and have one LED that's just the wrong way around because that's what they had to do to fit it. And you will spend an age trying to discover why your PCB is not working. And that's it, last one in. So I'm going to try to, uh, come on, crunch it down. So they're all pretty much aligned. This unfortunately is going to require tack welding because you've probably got very little hope of getting them all sitting straight, unless you've got one of those sort of foamy PCB assembly jigs which you may have, but I've never really bothered investing in. I suppose if you're doing a bunch of these for somebody, and you're trying to commercially produce a board that you could get made in China for, uh, you know, 10p each, but you want to just do it at home, you might want to buy one of those. It's basically um, a bit of foam. You pop the PCB on, and then you flop it around. Oh, look, they're actually pretty perfect. I could just leave them like that. That seems totally legit to me. So you've got an option here. You can either cut the legs and then fix the alignments, or you can just do what I'm doing and leave the legs long. 
and uh, work your way between the sort of jungle. I suppose you could use a heat gun too, would be quite neat, and I've really tried that. Just seeing, actually, luckily enough, the centre row of LEDs actually is pretty much fine, so I'm just going to leave those. You can always adjust them later if you need to. That's a nice thing about PCBs, as long as you're uh, pretty gentle, you know, excuse me, you know, ignore my diode abuse, you can uh, kind of rework them as often as you like, really. You just don't just just don't have your soldering iron on too hot. God, I'm just going along the riddle row now. I'm here now, might as well. Yeah, it's a really tiny half a millimeter movement. Okay, so I'm going to try some different side cutters, and I really don't know if these are any better than the last, but let's try them. Oh, so much better. In fact, I've got to close my eyes; it's firing them into my face. Maybe I can sort of angle them somewhere else. Can you hear that? They're just pinging off everywhere like bloody bullets. Good. Get rid of the last bits and pieces. That one wasn't so, such a clean cut. But. Finish the soldering. Look at that oxidization on that iron. Filthy. It's a filthy brute. So you can see they've purposely made this board so you can snap those lights off and put them probably uh, behind a grill or somewhere else or on your wing mirrors. Oh, that, that bloody LED. Don't do two legs at once, by the way, like me. That's <laughs> there. That LED just drops straight through. Um, I'm just wondering though, with appropriate colours, you could use this quite legitimately. I mean, if these were yellow ones, I'm thinking you could put them on your motorbike or, you know, even on your car, just as sort of hazard or motorway maintenance type people. General, uh, you know, lightweight emergency service stuff. As long as you're not trying to emulate a police car or something, I think they'd you know, get away with that. Oh, right, there we go. That's one lot done. Sorry, guys, we just got to do that again now. I'm really, uh, anyone who's sort of managed to sort of stay in the video this long, I'm, I salute you. That's uh, amazing of you. Ah, what the heck? Now, tell, tell me what you see here. Look at these pictures. What did I tell you? So these three are that way, and then this bottom row is jiggled all around. And it kind of makes me wonder now when I'm looking at this one. <gasps> did I miss it? Did I miss it? Because if I was designing a PCB, I would probably just copy that. No, it looks like that's that side is fine. It's just this side that's the one. God, that would have stuffed me, wouldn't it? But luckily I was vigilant. Vigilant because I'd probably just mentioned it to you. So that's the two odd ones. Let's just let's just get those in now because that'll prevent us from screwing this up afterwards. God, I imagine this is going to be quite a long video by the time we're finished here. So you've got good value, good value for your money here. Money being free, of course, but uh, probably about half an hour video. I'm gonna I'm gonna estimate. No, I think I'm going to estimate wrong because uh, the camera's telling me we've been at it for 24 whole minutes. I'll just try to time myself so you can get this done quicker. Okay, long leg, long leg up. Go. So, have any of you out there in the internet land put together any interesting kits recently? Because, uh, I get uh, I get a lot of messages about the kits, but I, I kind of think people are living vicariously through me. They're like, you know, they're just enjoying the kits, but you know, without having to actually build them themselves. And I think that's fine. I think that's the world we live in now. I watch a lot of people playing computer games that I like to play, but just 
can't be bothered to play. And I say I don't have time. I don't have time to play those games, but I clearly have time to watch somebody else playing a game. So why couldn't I just play that game? Because I'm lazy. We're all a bit lazy. Let's be truthful. Right. There we are. Oh, I, I kind of feel that they're really cranked down hard now. That they are probably going to be quite straight. But how can we do this one-handed? Soldier Nine doesn't want to know. So filthy now. Come on, give me a blob of solder. It's really oxidised now, it really just doesn't want to know. If you're lucky though, like now, it's, it's, it's just right there that it's getting a blob. If you get the blob the right size, it sits on the end of the soldering line. That's very satisfying when you get to, you get the moon and the planets and the stars all aligning to allow that to happen. Ow! If you've ever, ever left your uh, soldering on overnight though, that's kind of interesting, the solder on it, it'll just sort of it evaporates. The whole uh, tip basically starts to uh, evaporate. So I'm not sure what the uh, modality is there. I kind of think maybe it's because there's a certain amount... Oh, you know what, they're all in pretty straight. They're really quite straight. Um, I think there's a the solder is corrosive, of course. The flux and all those things are a bit, a little bit corrosive. And I wonder if it's just their action. I think those LEDs are straight enough, you know. I'm just going to cut them and go with it. Um, I don't want to take all day over this. Ow! Fire it at the camera at least. Ah, oh, I think I've figured out now why I got a scratch on my lens. I had um, quite a um, annoying scratch on the lens, and it's not annoying enough that you're going to see it because the way optics work but uh, it's annoying just to know it's there because when you have a scratch it sort of means the scratch proof coating's been uh, kind of damaged in that place so it's more likely to uh, continue to grow the scratch and I just couldn't for the life of me figure out how that could have possibly possibly happened because I sort of treat them with kid gloves but yeah clearly it's probably one of these errant component leads flying up and smashing it crashing into it at some force. Even though there's not much mass behind it, it's just sharp enough that they may well have just done that. So, uh, yeah. I've uh, kind of wonkified at least two now legs, so that's uh, a bit annoying. I have to go back and rework those. Yeah. Yeah. I've really screwed up. I don't know why I bother really. I uh, I really just apply power to most of these kits and then just chuck it on the shelf. So <laughs> I could get away with it. Nobody's gonna know that they're not straight. But why half ass something when you can full ass it? Okay, I think that's been full assed now. So we've got two repairs to do. The first repair being uh, a bridge. Oh, that's kind of handy. We have got, you can see, we've got quite a lot of uh, these component leads. So that will be quite easy to do because I'm just going to make a jump. I'll just hold it there for now. Watch it drop through. Watch it drop through when I take my finger off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to make a jumper across these two. We're going to take the solder line. In fact, I'm just going to cut that. I can form it before we do it any further. There we go. I can't see if my hand's obscuring your view, so I do apologise if it is, but you'll be able to see this side. Yeah. Stop moving. Stop wiggling. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm so twitchy. Look at my hand. It's like. Ah, ah, stop moving. That's good enough. And you see these other two pads there. They are going to be the two in circuit, so that's quite easy to fit bridge across those two as well. So yeah, great. Something is going right for a change. And then we'll just move that. Oh, burnt my fingertip there slightly. I think that'll do. That'll be 
Reet Canny. So let's just hook some power on it and you're going, yeah, yeah, what about your diode? Let's not worry about the diode for right now. The diode is immaterial to our test because it allows us to experiment further. Yeah. So black is ground, white is... V In fact, I don't know why I'm messing with that. I've got my ridiculously thick cables of power here and before I turn anything on, let's see what voltage it is. Out volts. It's at three volts, so these are pretty safe now. Ground is on the right of J1, so that's J1. Ground is the one. It's interesting, actually. Yeah. The ground. Hmm. <laughs> this massive sort of ground plane is actually VCC, which is kind of weird. To my eye, it just looks wrong. They're devoting a lot of uh, ground plane type, ground type plane to the VCC there, which is a little unusual. Look at these, these are sort of thick cables that can just sort of snap the tracking of a PCB at a moment's notice. So I'm going to put my finger right here and hold it and I flip it over and put the roller solder on the edge. So yeah, let's turn on the power. Oops. I turn on the power and simultaneously pull out the jumper. Okay. Did you see that? Did you see that? So we're basically at five volts. And while that, that is flashing, I'm just going to see if there's any indication here at all on how many volts it's expecting us to have. Mm, it doesn't say. Mm, 12 volts, 9 to 12. Okay, we've got, we got a bit more. Ooh. Now we're cooking. So let's just this. I believe this to be the duty cycle. So slower. We're half working. We're halfway there. Oh, we're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Okay. Something I want to test though while we're bit sensitive to touch isn't it this circuit yeah so while it's flicking away <laughs> when it wants to let's see what the effect of of bridging where that diode was would do yeah you see that fills out that gap. I, I kind of suspect you don't need a diode in there. I think you could just bridge it across. Now my more more of my concern though is to do with this other side not firing at all. So just having a quick look to see what could be wrong with that. We look at the circuit diagram shall we? So you've got these 10k resistors that are going to the base. So technically if you hooked up the base of each of these you should be able to get them both firing at the same time. And it's kind of a duplicated circuit. I don't have I uh, don't really want to break my tweezers. If I could, if I actually uh, there's some cheap tweezers. If I actually bridge between these two resistors the two bases of these transistors, which are probably more tricky, but let's have a go. Now we're going to short, we'll short them if we go for the old transistors, but yeah, the base of these resistors. I'm not seeing this side at all firing off.
So that leads me to believe that uh, could be could be a duff transistor. Let's touch it up slightly while we're here. See if we touch, if we can short that one out. But if we do the same on this side, we're not getting anything at all. So the only other connection is to this resistor that goes to here. It's connected to the VDD, so that's the power. So if we wanted to, we could actually kind of bypass the whole. Uh, well, but basically, by shorting this to, you're basically bypassing the whole transistor, and the fact that the LEDs aren't coming on is the uh, the problem there. So probably jump cut. And I'm back. Yes, indeedy, it took some doing to debug it, and I. Uh, I'm going to show you what I ended up having to do with that. Um, yeah, I think there was some sort of fracture, micro fracture on the PCB, perhaps as part of this whole being broken. Remember, it was broken off and we found it. No, oh, that was the other side, right? Hmm, maybe not. Uh, something weird's going on here, anyway. You know, if you flex the PCB, you'd lose certain rows of these LEDs. So I've kind of gone round and bodged different. Uh, bits of lead over the back and just reinforce that and it seems fine now. I found a signal diode, chuck that in, yep that works fine as well. So you could have got these options of having this really slow then you can see exactly how it's doing it. So it's one, two, three and then it should flip over one, two, three and vice versa. Um, interestingly enough, I think there's a different current draw on the blue LEDs and the red LEDs, so that might be something that could be probably done a bit better. We'll wind it up. Something also, this looks a bit more policey there, this looks quite policey. Um, something also I've noticed is that um, you do need to run this at quite high voltage, so if, you, if it's running at it's 12 volts now, but if I sort of turn it down to maybe 10 volts, you can see the blue, at least to my eye, starts to get a bit weak. So. You know, look, pumping that up. We're nearly at 14 volts here now, so that's that's nice. Oh, <laughs> nice till it blew. It, we actually that literally did blow. We just blew it up. Something died. Oh well. No, it's coming back. We only blew up half of it. And then we're back again at 10 volts. So yeah, a bit flaky. Now the problem is with things with like 555 timer circuits, they always seem a bit dodgy. Like sometimes it'll just lock up and then you've got to sort of fiddle, fiddle, fiddle around the back, fiddle it with it and it will just sort of start working again. So there you go. Bit unreliable. I, I don't think I would use a 555 timer in a production circuit and it's kind of, you could see, it's now jammed on in a weird half on, half off state. I think, you know, that, I don't know if we can recover that. But if this was in your your police car, you'd be pretty miffed, wouldn't you? Thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. It's going again. So please, da. So please feel free to comment down below. Click subscribe, like if you feel that way inclined. And as ever, thanks for watching.